Around the 1900s, an Italian economist named Vilfredo Pareto was walking through his garden and he noticed that every year about 20% of the pea pods produced 80% of the peas. He took note of this and started spotting the same pattern everywhere else. And during research for a paper, he discovered that roughly 20% of the people in Italy owned 80% of the wealth, 20% of the people owned 80% of the land, 80% of the money, and 80% of the influence. He went on to study land distribution in other countries and also found a similar pattern. And this is where Wilfredo Pareto came up with the Pareto Principle. Now we usually call it the 80-20 rule. And just in case you haven't heard of it, the 80-20 principle basically says that 20% of our efforts gets us 80% of our results. A minority of causes result in a large majority of results. So it's a way of isolating the powerful uh, influences on any event or any uh, objective that you have. It lies in one phrase, which is finding the vital few in the trivial many. As, as many of you know, I'm sure, the 80-20 principle asserts that a minority of causes, inputs or effort usually leads to the great majority of results from those causes. A good benchmark, really a hypothesis, is that 80% of results come from 20% of causes. Make sure not to get caught up on the numbers. The ratio 80-20 is just meant to keep the rules simple and easy to remember. In reality, it can be 90-10, 95-5, or even 99-1. It doesn't really matter. All it's saying is the little things are the ones that are accounting for most of our results. The 80-20 principle is most popular in business, but the principle can easily be applied to life and happiness as well. Think of how much clothes you have. Most likely, you wear 20% of your clothes 80% of the time. We usually spend 80% of our time on TV, video games, and social media when it only brings 20% of our joy. 80% of our distractions come from 20% of the sources around us. And it can go much deeper than that too. 20% of the people we hang out with bring us 80% of our pleasure. 80% of our memories come from 20% of our experiences. If you look for it, you'll start to see this 80-20 ratio everywhere. One of the best things we can do with the 80-20 rule is to apply it to our goals and our productivity. We can take Pareto's 80-20 rule and apply it to almost any situation. In particular, we can apply it to goal setting and productivity. According to this principle, 20% of your activities will account for 80% of your results. That means, if you have a list of 10 items to accomplish, two of those items will turn out to be worth more than the other eight items put together. The sad fact is that most people procrastinate on the top 10 or 20% of items that are the most valuable and important, the vital few that account for all your success, and instead they busy themselves with the least important 80%, the trivial many that contribute very little or nothing to their success. Have you ever known someone who seems to be busy all day long, but it just doesn't really seem like they're getting much done? This is almost always because they're working on the eight tasks that are low value or no value while procrastinating on the one or two things that can make the biggest difference to their lives. The most valuable tasks are often the hardest and most complex ones, which is exactly why we avoid them. But the payoffs and rewards from doing those can be tremendous and really change the entire course of our lives. Get into the habit of asking yourself often, is what I'm doing right now in the top 20% of my tasks or is it in the bottom 80%? and resist that temptation to clear up the small things first. We can become so involved in those little things and they just keep multiplying over and over until we get to the end of the day and we really didn't accomplish anything at all. This is definitely a habit. Build the habit of working on the valuable things first. I'll link my video why this is so important. The 80-20 rule is great for goals too. If you can, take a second to pause this and write down the top five goals you have. Now, if you could only complete one of those goals right now today, which one of those goals would make everything else easier or would make those other goals irrelevant? And if you do that, now you'll have your top goal that will make the biggest difference to your life. And that's the goal you should be focusing most of your time on. 
The 80-20 rule should remind us to focus our time on that 20% that's really making the difference. The 20% is what we should be getting done every day. Some days are hectic and there's no way we can get everything done, but we have to make sure to get that 20% done because that's the part that really matters. The 80-20 principle helps us manage the most valuable resource we got, our time. If you really wanna get ahead fast, switch that metric up to spending 80% of your time on the top 20% of things that would make the biggest difference. Doing this will save years of our time. And in order to be as productive as possible, we have to apply it to all the areas of our life to make sure our time is invested where it should be invested. Be sure to analyze and find out which of your 20% is creating the 80%. If you work a job, which 20% of your job brings you the most pleasure or at least makes that job bearable? Is there any way you can do more of that part of your job? If you're trying to lose weight, you can save a ton of time by figuring out which 20% of the foods you're eating that are keeping you from getting 80% of the results you want. And if you work out, most likely 20% of the exercises you're doing are producing 80% of the results you want in your body. Also, most people watch a ton of TV, but really only enjoy about 20% of the shows they watch. Only watch the shows that matter to you and cut out the rest to save hours of your time every day. Now, in my opinion, the 80-20 question to ask yourself that really matters is what do you spend 20% of your time doing that brings you 80% of your happiness? And this 20% usually involves people, like friends, family, and relationships. So now, apply the 80-20 rule to your friends and relationships. You gotta ask yourself, who are the 20% of people I'm closest to who are making me the happiest? Knowing which friends bring us the most joy, those are the friends we should be saving the most chunks of time for. We can easily apply the 80-20 rule to dating too. Don't chase people that want to go out with you or keep flaking on you. Don't even worry about the maybes. Focus on the ones that want to go out with you right away and see how those go first. Pick the 20% that want to go out with you and don't spend too much time on the other 80% that aren't willing to meet up right away. The 80-20 rule will save us a ton of time in our love relationships too. If you're in a relationship, ask yourself, what are the 20% of behaviors that cause 80% of the problems in my relationship? And also ask, what are 20% of the things we do together that create 80% of the intimacy we have together? You'll even find that in a good relationship, we really only get about 80% of what we want out of it, and the other 20% is what we have to work on. And just as an extra tip here, don't get fooled by the next person you see who's offering that particular 20% that's missing because you'll be leaving the other 80% you have on the table. These are important questions to ask that most of us never even consider asking, and chances are they're pretty easy to answer too. It doesn't occur to us that there's an efficiency we can apply to every aspect of our life. And not only that there's an efficiency, but we have control over that efficiency too. What I personally love about seeing the world through this 80-20 lens is that it forces us to ask ourselves questions that we normally wouldn't ask. It's a constant reminder of where our focus is and where it should actually be, which is on the things that will give us the biggest results. And by putting our focus in the right place, whether it's money, relationships, productivity, hobbies, or literally anything else, we can start to truly experience the meaning of less is more and more with less. Well, visualize it. Do you think that Warren Buffett is busy frantically crunching numbers at his desk? Do you think that's what Rupert Murdoch spends his time doing? Do you imagine that Jim Clark does that rather than thinking about boats that he's going to sail? What's the value that Bill Gates added to the world a function of the hours that he put in? Or what about Ronald Reagan who famously said, it's true hard work never killed anyone, but I figure why take the chance? <laughs> or John F. Kennedy or Winston Churchill or Albert Einstein or Isaac Newton. What all these people do or did was spend time creatively on the few essentials and little or no time on the mass of trivia that engulfs all of us most of the time. Most life, especially most business life, is trivia. Don't work to deal with the trivia, work to avoid the trivia. Save yourself for the one or two things each week that are really important in terms of getting results. Spend time deciding what those things are. Then work out how to deal with them. Then spend time considering and reconsidering and preparing. And then go and get what you want. 
because, ladies and gentlemen, few things really matter. But they matter a tremendous amount. These things that really matter are often difficult to find. But once you find the few things that really matter, they give you tremendous power. The power that gives you more from less. The power of the 80-20 principle.